excited. Um, good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. I know it's a really busy time with midterms and lunch and things happening, so um, thank you. Uh, my name is Quinn Gilman Forlini. I teach creative writing here at Ursinus, um, and it is my pleasure to introduce the poet Paul Gorman today, who will be reading for us. Uh, Paul Gorman is a writer who lives and works in Philadelphia, and he uses writing as an open letter to his past as an active drug user and his present as a person. Paul is also an advocate for harm reduction practices. Paul's poetry is currently featured in the exhibition Bearing Witness by Adam Del Marcel, which is located upstairs here at the Berman through May 18th. And if you haven't had the chance to see this exhibit yet, I highly encourage you to check it out today after the reading. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my colleague, Gloria Best, who brought this exhibit to our campus and also organized this reading today. It's hard to pin down Paul's poetry. It's certainly dreamlike, almost surreal, creating wild landscapes that propel forward with their stream of consciousness style and careful attention to sound and cadence. The speaker's voice is informal, but the language is crafted, infused with wordplay and unusual rhymes. Yet the poems are very much a part of our world. The speaker's voice overlaps with other voices, including lyrics from Christmas carols and Instagram. Paul's poems create a tension between physicality and spirituality, between ceremony and true vulnerability. The lines between past and present blur as we get the speaker's jarring connection to eating ice cream cones on the steps of a courthouse he once used to take, quote, piss tests. The speaker's awareness of place unfolds into a multiplicity of time. What happened five years ago and what's happening now are jutted up against each other. The speaker is nine years old watching ESPN and also waiting in the lobby for a Narcon delivery. It's as if the act of creating the poem brings the speaker back to that moment from the past. Sometimes the reader feels a bit lost in time too, as the poems make us confront our own multiple timelines. As the speaker puts it, it wasn't just this moment that had gotten me to this moment. In the poem Stringer, the speaker says they're, quote, trying to find a balance while trying to find a balance plays on an iPod. And to me, this line represents the mirroring of life and art that constant, consistently appears in Paul's work. The poems never seem to achieve this balance, instead almost celebrating our unsteady and uncertain reality. Still, the poems search for it, and through that, uncover a liminal space in which everything is questioned. Reality, comfort, truth, social media, God, whatever the poem just said a moment before. In the poem Nigh 2012, God, the speaker grapples with this kind of contradiction. Quote, I'm persisting to build this wall between a God I don't want to love me, away from a family I don't want to hurt anymore, but do not know how to do anything but hurt them. And later in the same poem, I am folding into myself toward a God who has always loved me. The speaker's openness about uncertainty gives the poems their honest, vulnerable quality. As the poet Susan Mitchell says, poems begin where ordinary conversation leaves off. And Paul's poems do just that. They invite us to use poetry to get to this place where we can finally say something we couldn't say before. Please join me in welcoming Paul Barton. Thank you, Quint. Uh, that was a pretty cool introduction um, that I don't know if I'm worthy of. Um, I definitely um, can relate to, uh, I'm like, wow, they, these are things I never thought about when I read them before, but they're making sense. Um, always unsteadily trying to find a balance and even knowing that when you find that balance, it's probably going to be gone maybe within the next 15 minutes, but um, still trying. Um, I'm Paul Gorman. Thanks, Gloria, for having me here. And thank you, everybody that's here for being here and welcoming me. Um, I am just going to read a few poems instead of trying to wax philosophical up here. I'll just let my, uh, my words uh, do the talking for me, if you will. No. Still not making sense even when I'm trying to. Um, this is called Reversal. 
and it was written in 2018. The majority of the things that I'm going to read today um, were written within the last, between 2013 and maybe yesterday. Um, and this is called Reversal. Slang fent analogs, dying to be digital, while stubbornly analog. Log flume brawls in the tunnel of love. Perfect buzz, those timeless summer nights of drinking and taking drugs. The right place, people, and time. Beautiful mind, until I take too much. The seal broken, the gut spewed from the Dutch. Gut punch, bar, gut punch, bar crawl. Hi, hello, I am a person in recovery, and my name is Paul. Flash forward, here and now, flashbacks to DUI checkpoints and struggling with the child locks. God blast, first of the day, and sweating through my socks, sneezing through my eyeballs in detox, rehab romance, let's AMA, hospital stays, DOA, multiple bus rides to KOP to boost Mach 3s. What is the world to think of me? Junkie. Ask me, what do I think of me? Junkie. I am a low down dirty shame. I am a bottom of the barrel dope fiend. I am a lying stinking thief. If I were to die, it is natural selection choosing me, and it would be a relief. At least that's what this shame and willful ignorance, stigmatization, tell me. See more compassion from the dude selling me that get well in the morning. Not in my neighborhood. It is already in every neighborhood, and there has got to be a better way. Of course there is, but until then, please don't let me die today. The title of this is Shoot Safe. We were both on this route yesterday. Got the heat on inside. Well, outside, it gets more and more muggy. I remember calling myself a druggie for the first time. It was 11th grade. What does the world have in store for you now? We wonder. Lost in a moment for a second, but it will pass. Ran out of gas twice in the same day on two separate occasions, if you can believe that. Middlesex Township, PA. A Waffle House, a sex shop, 16 hotels, and three truck stops. All these settings play their parts in somebody's play. Everybody has a, a thousand different stories. Fascinating, boring, adore me, abhor me. End up somewhere out in left field. Swap meets samurai swords, swinging off this morning's speedball. I'm a bit, more, a bit more out there than just left field for today for this week's bender, for last week's disaster. Using drugs does not mean someone deserves to die. Shoot safe. Multiple meanings could be derived from, from that in this world. Insidious, intervenous. We want fair and equal treatment for everyone. Another official sta statement said, how many times must we cry bullshit? Throw up a million tent cities in center city. Let's see what the official statement is then. In the meantime, real time, watch out for each other and carry Narcan. That was written in, um, I think, June of 2018, right the day after they closed uh, the Tulip Street and the um, Kensington Ave encampments. And I was actually on Emerald today. They closed that almost a month ago already, because February, oh, it is a month ago. February goes so quick. Um, but that was. Uh, in response to, I think, the statement that the mayor's, Mayor Kenny's office put out about the encampments. Um, and they ended up closing Emerald Street on, the, I think, the coldest day of the year, January 30th or 31st, and there was a murder at Emerald and Lehigh a couple days ago, so. The beat goes on. Um, This is this is called the title of this is IV drug use in registered national historic landmarks. Cotton fever at Ford's Theater. Happy hour holidays at TGI Fridays. Jiffy Lube shake in Portland, Oregon. Importing other people's stories. We are children of a lesser God, and I am William Hurting today. Goodwill hunting yesterday. 
Was that oatmeal really steel cut in four ways? Steel and factory jobs have been declining for dec decades. Fracking, so many distractions to keep the masses <coughs> fractured, makes it easier to control. Video killed the radio star and television's glow was the backdrop as I killed my soul. Won't you stand by me as I OD on the excess? Your present, pres presented, your presence was felt, dripping in felt garments, the garment district, the loft district, the meat, pass meat packing district, fish town, pig town. Oh, who's living here in Allentown? Where can I get the quickest and cheapest bundle when my main dude is not around? Nayarit, Mexico, heroin sells. Wish you were here, but you're not, so I wish you well. National Historic Landmark restrooms. The hardest part about loving me is me. Downingtown, God's country, refugees without borders, made up lines on a map. Two cacti passing in the night, a coyote's howl, let me know where you were at. Smugglers, coves, Right. Smugglers roads and pirates coves, the places we have gone that only we know. Your way is yours to have, to hold. I am not in control, and I am not losing control. One wish, asked for balance. Falling off is an improvement from falling out. Cotton fever in Ford's Theater, and John Wilkes Booth is shot out. as paper planes go up in smoke screens until what exactly still didn't understand I didn't understand even as the blood ran down my arms it wasn't just this moment that had got me to this moment sometimes I think I miss using most because it offered me an excuse it was far easier to break a law than to hurt all of you but I still do did both anyways and I still do one of those some days just when you think or you are out of things to say, here comes more bullshit, perhaps my greatest natural resource. So, what's that say? Let's throw a parade and hope everybody comes to cast dispersion against that pesky fighter named Hope. I think I am. I hope I can. Little engines that run out of gas. However, this was one that runs on coal. And the jobs that provided that were mostly left their respective geographic locales, locales long ago. Last house in the row, a bando versus condo. Hungry for realness, they avowed. The path to get there blocked by a movable, ob movable object, and yet the progress slow. This is called Happy Valley. Um, there was a time in my life, um, my dad got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2001. And um, one of my times, inpatient, outpatient, whatever it was, there, there was a, a few of them. Um, a therapist told me that if I didn't stop using before my dad wasn't aware of who I was or passed away, that I would stay out there forever. And I didn't, it stayed with me. It didn't affect my day to day at the time, but that, that res, like it, it helped, it found a place and, and stayed there with me. And um, my dad died um, on October 26th, was my, which, is my, which was my daughter's 16th birthday. So we, and then my cousin got married that day. So we had a really Irish day. We had a death, a birthday, and a, uh, a wedding. Um, and then I, my dad was a Penn Stater, and uh, we went out to the Maryland-Penn State game at the end of November, which is hopefully going to become a tradition just to say, somebody's still going up to State College for your dad. And, um, but getting to the, uh, to the point, um, I never thought that I was going to get sober, that I was going to stop using, um, and definitely did not think if my dad died that I was going to be able to get through that without being just completely off my head. And that's not how that um, that's not how that story turned out at all. Um, I just got to spend a lot of good time with my dad these last 
few years and uh, even though there was a lot of pain and there still is, there was a lot of comfort that came along with, with those experiences. And this is called Happy Valley and uh, I wrote that, I think I wrote it on the way up to State College that day. Freezing rain and phantom pain, phantom limb, phenomenon. Could you kill once and then kill again? Darwinian, aspiring, perspiring in linen at a summer wedding in Hood River, Oregon. It is pouring again from, the fo from where the faucet used to be. I'm standing where you used to be and I can see your face. Trace a line in a linear path. Fuck that, where everything and everyone is just another routine. Crush saltines in an old soup bowl as the grayness of the sky grows thicker. Happy Valley, the hopeful audacity in my voice, the times we didn't care to make any noise. If I go far enough away, will I be able to hear your voice? Juniana County, Delaware Township, is that far enough? An echo in a forest, tap me on the shoulder during a ghost tour. The time was our time, do we still want more? Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I'm okay too. And I knew that you were not going to answer, and that's fine. But I'm still going to call you. <clears throat> this is this is Stringer, and it is a reference to Stringer Bell from The Wire, but none of the words are about him. Um, industrial backflips. You, get, you got me doing backflips through hoops of the world. When you can, but you, can only, you only feel that you can't. North Wales Starbucks soundtracks, Sinatra into Common. Mixed bag life, mixing drugs tonight. Please don't take my high, please don't take my life. Trying to find a balance while trying to find a balance plays on an iPod. Bought back from a pawn shop in Pottstown. Are you still down? I never wasn't. Just because we argue over this and that doesn't mean I wouldn't. Open-ended questions and codependency. We are never going to get it, are we? Whatever it may be. Have no idea how to use that everyday viewing septic key. Tokens and transfers, and you know what makes it even worse? When motherfuckers are posting but can't even answer. Eating imported ice cream from Cincinnati on the old courthouse steps. The same building where I used to take piss tests. It is okay for you to admit it that at least a low-down part of you wants to see me relapse because because, who knows why, Lord knows there is all different kinds of sickness. The sickest parts, organ donation, cracked the chest cavity and it was empty. Where, oh, where did my heart go? Thought I was a taker, a heartbreaker, a liar, and a thief. Yes, I have been all of those things. Yes, I could be all of them again. Let's live in glass houses and break all the fragments, the audacity and arrogance of perfection. Let's live in straw houses and wait for the wind to blow it all in. To cast stones and judgment in every direction, save in. Nobody, nobody is above it. Some just get bitter or more bitter at it. I am an accident waiting to happen. Stockholm Syndrome life. Are you still a hostage when you are the one that keeps strapping back in? One or two more? Okay, thanks. This is called My Brain is Centralia. All these Narcan models, all these Instagram models, somewhere in mid-Ohio, Kensington and Allegheny, Monongahela, Three Rivers, there, I did it. Crimes ending in a cooker, there, I fixed it. Concrete biscuits in a paper bag, there, I ripped it. A jury of whose peers are, they, are these? There is no chance you will be acquitted. Acquit it. Prison industrial complex. Monolith. Huge profits. Your time helps reach bottom lines. That is the real short story. Short films. Sublingual sublim, films mm -hmm. of Suboxone. Better living through medication assisted treatment. And all types of chemistry. This is not for posterity's sake. Basic humanity. It can't be. That it was all so simple all along. I carry my own dead weight. And it is a bit heavier today as I scroll through forecasts and realities of drought and devastation, that vicious silence, a calmness in the cool apathy of waiting, community frustrations, please do not cross the line. Somebody else drew this line in the sand. I took a long look at the line and I ran. Do one more.
Sorry, guys. All right. This is called The Avenel, and it was written in June of 2017. And this one's dedicated to my daughter, Cassidy. She is the only earthly reason I am alive. We have been losing you for nearly two decades. I am lost some days more than others. The light fades. There are different kinds of darkness in the den with lions, in search of a brother, in search of another, at arm's length, close enough to touch, but it feels impossible. Driving a square around McPherson, riddled with obstacles. Effing Clearfield has that bomb today, apparently. At least, that's what the foot traffic tells me. I say there's nothing here for me, and yet I keep coming here on different days in different ways for various reason, reasons. There is something for me here, and it is quite possible I've already found it more than once, even though it was different then than it is now. On the way to school, last week I got asked where was the spot for hard. With each passing breath, all of us are getting closer to God. I gave him the shirt off my back, but it was not a selfless, selfless act. If it truly was, I would not have mentioned that I did that. Cinch sack on your backpack with an overdose kit, eventually to be used on a kid from the Poconos who had overdosed in Hope Park. Nowhere else to go, so he had come here. So we all came here, and a minute passed, an hour passed, a year passed, a life gone past. This is going to be here, whether it is here, in this spot, or a motel in the middle of nowhere. Whether or not you or I last, Death, life, drugs, and change can come softer, hard, slower, fast. Thank you. Thank you for reading. That was wonderful. Um, I'm Rob. I'm a student here at Ursinus. I work at Berman and also work um, for the studio art department doing various things. But uh, um, I just wanted to talk about my experience in uh, Kensington this past semester. I was a student in Philly, the Philly X program, which is a semester abroad, so to speak, um, living and studying in Philly. Um, go back like a year. Before this, um, I was introduced to Prevention Point through an artist's work and what their mission was um, of reducing um, harm. And when I came to class this past fall, I saw that we were visiting there on the syllabus. And that's where a lot of this whole like work that I've gotten into has started. Um, but moving to my time at Prevention Point, I uh, volunteered putting together um, Narcan kits, which are the Narcan drug with gloves, instructions, pretty much everything you need to uh, reverse an overdose. Um, they're really more than just a like needle exchange program, which is just like one small part of their organization. They're meant to be there to support people and allow them to receive government assistance um, because you need an address for that where a lot of people are homeless and are not able to apply for these um, benefits. Um, and just a, kind of like a closing thing. Um, they really just kind of like tackle this whole problem of addiction um, from pretty much every angle that they possibly can, from the primary care to help with uh, like legal things, um, reading contracts, documents. Um, they really do a lot for the community in Kensington. teach art history and museum studies here at Ursinus and this winter my students in Museum 200 and I put together an exhibition on the second floor called Bearing Witness um, with images and a collaboration with a poet to help us remain empathetic 
about the world that we see or a world that we may know nothing of. It's about engaging with that empathy, keeping it very real, keeping it very close to you. You may not encounter um, opioid addiction in your life, but more than likely you will, given the statistics. If not you, then your colleague, your coworker, your friend, the person that you say hi to and buy coffee from every day. So we put this together to help us keep that empathy real and center. And so I thank Paul for being real and reading for us today and for Quinn for the introduction. Rob for his willingness to talk about his work at Prevention Point and my students for putting up the exhibition. If you want more information about the show upstairs, I invite you to go up and have a look. We have some information here. If you are a member of the Your Sinus community, we have the information for the Wellness Center if you need to connect with our services. Through this ex exhibition, we've also been able to put Narcan in the AED boxes in each location on campus. If you find a friend in need or if you are in need of those services, Campus Safety will be happy to help you figure out how to use them and where they are located. I invite you today to grab a poster. Adam, the artist, uh, printed our sinus specific posters for us. He's also um, uh, talking about the stigma of, um, of use and abuse of various substances, including the opioids. So grab a poster on your way out, and once again, I thank you very much for coming out, coming out this afternoon. Have a great afternoon. We're also here for questions if you have any. Paul will be happy to answer, or Rob.